What's up, everybody? It's your boy, the Italian Stallion, ready for another episode of Rebels with a Cause. You know what time it is, baby. It's summer workout time. It has begun. It is time. School's over. That's done. It is now time, as my boy Shane talks about, as the second part of that second quarter. Because halftime is the break, fall camp, and the schedule is your third and your fourth quarter. And then, of course, overtime, the playoffs in the state. But right now, we're still in that second quarter right now. And uh, this is a big time. But as you know, we started a little late tonight. My apologies on that. Things were busy at the office. But uh, we all wanted to bring you an episode because we know that uh, you all watch, you all want to know. And we got a lot of football to cover today. Going to talk a little NBA. I'm going to tell you this. This show is going to be way more exciting than that sorry pay-per-view that aired on Saturday uh, over in Saudi Arabia. The King of the, the Ring or whatever it was. It was, it was, it was bad. Uh, we can even talk about that if you guys want to and so forth. But first and foremost, you do know that it is the hour, 9 o'clock, 9.30, Tuesday nights. It is Rebels with a Cause. Because remember, everybody, the cause don't stop when the clock hits zero. And of course, a uh, shout out once again to our graduates that graduated a week ago. I bet it still feels real, but uh, you know, you guys are ready to take that next step. And uh, I hope our message has really brought something to you. And uh, we meant, meant it with nothing but love. And, and for the guys that are coming up this upcoming senior year, you only have one. So make it, make it the best one that you could ever have, honestly. And it starts today in the weight room. Uh, first and foremost, got to get out to um, uh, my girl, Kim Castle over at King's Chamber always takes care of me. She's getting closer and closer to that opening date, and we'll have it for you. Um, you know, you can go get your pedicures, your manicures, um, hair, beard, everything, you know, waxes, massages. She'll get you taken care of. So definitely go pay her a visit over there on Washington Pike, especially when she's up and running. And also got to give a shout out to my boy, Alex Thatcher and the Knoxville Coffee Company, the best brew in the heart of Marble City right there off of Sutherland Avenue. Any time of the day, it's good. So definitely go uh, check them out and give them some love, a true rebel with a cause. And also, most importantly, remember the views and opinions of this program are not affiliated with those of any other organization or of West High School. This is simply myself, two pair, Shane O'Mac, the rebel with a cause crew. That being said, I want to give I want to. I want everybody to show the respect that he is due, because I'm about to bring in my co-host. He is Mister 2003 West. He is the voice of the Rebels and Lady Rebels basketball team for 18 plus years, and he is the hardest working man that I know. He is my brother. I love him to death. So show him the respect wherever you're watching from, whether it's live or recorded. Let's give it up for the one, the only, two-pair Tate, Brian Tate. What is up? Man, what's happening, man? How you doing? How you doing? Oh, man? dude, I, I'm tired. But you want to know something? I think I got a second win just seeing you guys. And it's my favorite time of the, 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 the week or Tuesday nights. You know what time it is. It's Rebels with the Cause because that cause don't stop. When the clock hits zero. So. When the clock, hey, that's a great tagline. Oh it's, yeah, it's, I've been trying to get it to catch some. Re, re, rebels with a clock. Rebels with a cause. Doesn't mean the cause stop until the yeah, clock yeah, hits cause, zero. Yeah, because the cause don't stop when the clock hits zero. So, and for those graduates, the cause, doesn't, the cause don't stop till the clock hits zero. That's it. The cause, so. goes, the cause don't stop till the clock hits zero. Yep. Yep. The so. calls don't stop. Wow, that's deep, man. Yeah, I've, I've, the calls I've been the, playing oh, with it. Hold on. Yeah. The, see, sure. the calls Because the stop. cause don't stop when the clock hits zero. When the clock hits, that's deep. 
Mm-hmm. Yep, that's Yay. right. Because everybody takes their uniform off, whether you win the championship or you lose, you know, in any sport. And you got to take it off, even mm. though you don't want to. But that don't mean that your cause, your story, don't stop. So exactly. that's it. So, that, that's yeah. not. That's deep, man. Yeah, that's man. deep. So I like I've been that. trying to get a tagline for us as we continue. I mean, can you believe this, buddy? We are in episode 23. We are episode 23. Three and uh, it's exciting, man. It's exciting. Dude, we're gonna reach a hundred episodes pretty quick, man. Oh yeah, oh yeah. You know, I mean, I think that uh, by the end of the year we'll get to obviously fifty-two because of fifty-two weeks in a year, you know, and so mm-hmm. forth. But mm-hmm. hopefully, we're talking about a third ball, a third gold ball, like the two and Dude. everything like that. So yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> that'd be great if we if yeah if we if we got if we get to three. It, 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 I, I really think the guys, I think that I feel like the, our boys' basketball team would be the, the next thing closest to doing that. But I, I really think Gaporo and Eggleston are about all business, and it's, it's going to be a different team. Don't they gotta have a shirt that team. says "All In" because they gotta be all in, like poker chips. Like this is it, man. This, this is, is it. Yeah. I mean, very rarely do you have this stack of chips in a senior, junior and sophomore class for them. Mm-hmm. Kind of like what's going on with football right now. I mean, you've got guys that are mm-hmm. contributing in all levels, sophomore, junior, senior. So, I mean, right. yeah, yeah, for sure. So, um, two pair uh, uh, before we bring on our our brother, um, mm-hmm. I did want to uh, any shout outs you wanted to give, man, anybody that, that oh, loved the man. show or anything like that. So, man, uh I got to give a, a big shout out to Razor Sharp Barbershop. You know what I'm saying? My man, Juice, always hooking it up. Look them up on uh, RazorSharpKnoxville.com. Hit them up on RazorSharpKnoxville.com. Um, man, let me see who else. I got a ton. Let me give a shout out to Elijah Gardner. Oh, yeah. This man's Twitter. This dude is ridiculous. I'm talking about ridiculous, the throws. Like, the man can make the back. He can make all the throws. Like, back shoulder throw. He puts it on precision. Like, I, I've been more impressed by watching his Twitter. And I, I said if, if he plays next year, he's going to be a whole problem. Yeah. Hey, and whole, he's got a lot of camps. Um, I mean, did you see the list of camps he's going to? I mean, it's like longer than my arm or whatever like that, honestly. So shoot. Yeah. But, I, I feel like I feel like he's I feel like he's got the talent to be a D, division one quarterback and at, at playing at the next level. I feel like he can be that. Absolutely. Like the way he the way he just looks from what I'm watching, yeah, he, he look he looked pretty solid, Slim. Yeah, no, I, yeah. I a shout out to him, and and I and I think you told me he's a fan of the show too, so I got to give him a shout out too. So mm-hmm. got to throw up that W to him, man. W to all the guys that follow us and support us, and just know that we love you guys back. Honestly, we really do. So, um, yeah, I mean, I wish we had, I wish we had a podcast about about our like our <laughs> years. <laughs> I know, like where 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 was the guy that was twenty years older than us from the seventies, you know, yeah, or whatever right. like that? Yeah, like yeah. yeah. <laughs> there had to be a class of eighty two, eighty three guy there. Come on now, so you yeah. know, I mean, shoot. So he was probably like, nah, these kids aren't. They're, they're not winning championships. We're not wasting our time. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. But it's like it, it's crazy to the watch West, like from the first championship to now, and I know. It, it just feels good, man. Like to say, like we got an award-winning program. You know, like it, a lot of schools don't have like award-winning programs where they're competing for state titles. Exactly. Exactly. And we've got it in our backyard, and it's like and you, I, you gotta, I, I love the ride. Yeah. 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 Hey, speaking of that first title, that 2014, the OGs, as I like to call them, shout out to Nathan Cottrell and his wife down in Atlanta. They got this reality thing going down there and they are just killing it. So, and he watches the show and he did say he was going to be on eventually. So, I, I'm going to get the great Nathan Cottrell on Man, here. So that'd be a dope like show. That. So, so shout out to my guy, show. Nathan, down shout there out. in Atlanta. Shout out to my man Paul Romero, uh, the athletic director at D West High School. Um, 
Shout out to Coach Carruthers as well, uh, doing a fantastic job. Like they're really doing, they're really doing a great job at West, man. Like they really are. Like I'm, shout out to Spees too, Miss Ashley, Doctor Ashley Spees. Shout out to her, and you know, mm-hmm. again, uh, even a shout out to her husband getting that position over at Austin East too. Yeah, so I thought that was gonna really do cool. Great things for Rob. So yeah, for sure. Love Rob. Rob's a hell of an educator. Hell of a man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And loves uh, kids, just wants kids to succeed, man. He wants Honestly. to see kids to succeed. You know yep. what I'm saying? Both of um, them do. Got a definite got a got a big uh endorsement from, you know what I'm saying, my man Joe Davis, uh with Black Wealth. Shout out to Black Wealth. Um nice. you know what I'm saying? And 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 it is it's crazy because Austin East, I think they're becoming a Nike school. Wow. Again, in football. Okay. And you bring back Stanton Stevens and what they did over at Austin East while we were in school. Mm. They had the likes of Stephen Booker, the likes of Mark Andrews, the Corey Kennebrews, the Anthony McAllisters, the Albert Harris's, the, yeah. the Brian Blair's, the Lee Curry. They had them type of guys there. The, the the Corey Andersons, the you know what I'm saying? They they had guys like that. And I mean the Lowry, you know what I'm saying? Uh, mm-hmm. Courtney Brown, you know what I'm saying? I'm just going way down now. I'm I'm going to all the AEs. <laughs> guys. But the, I'll the tell talent. you this though, he they were winning. They they yeah. were running the Anthony show. Anderson, my man, yeah. Anthony Anderson on them teams. But yeah, Stan Stevens, man. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it makes Kwai-Yu, it more fun. Kwayu makes- Graham as his assistant. Yeah, yeah, and Kwayu had some success there too. You know, I mean, honestly, I'm I'm going to be very surprised um, where Austin East falls. Uh, uh, you know, I know it's not going to be done overnight, but I'll tell you this: if the kids buy in, Stanton can get the butts out there and get the numbers back up because Stanton it really is sad to coach. see that program in the in in where where it got to. You know, it should have never gotten to that point honestly so should have never got to that yeah. point yeah so should have never gotten to that point yeah but uh but they they made the right hires and you know um and of course I want to bring in our our guy our Shane O'Mac our stat guy he's got a couple of uh tidbits for us because you know there was a coaching change in the last couple of weeks at Clinton High School we're going to all yeah. talk about that our thoughts on it um also talk a little west football so but uh you know everywhere that's watching whether it's in Mechanicsville or over there off of Kingston Pike by the Food City or even Lonsdale. Sequoia Hills Lonsdale West Hills Westmoreland Hills so. <laughs> Rocky Hill uh Rocky give it up hey, you know what even even off of Western Avenue down there where Carnes, where he actually lives. He's coming from us from his studio, the Shane O'Mac studio. Father of the year, the man, the myth, the legend. Let's bring him on. Give him a warm Rebels with a Cause welcome. Mr. Shane O'Mac. What's up, fellas? What's up? How are we doing tonight? Great, brother. How hey, you doing? How are you? How are you? Uh, I am tired coming home from football practice. I've been up since about 5.30 and the day hasn't stopped yet. I'm tired. <laughs> It's a full day, man. Shoot, so but it, but but you know what? It, it's worth it. You get to be yeah. around the football again and so forth. That's that's the thing. That's what it's all about. Yep, I lost my voice a little bit tonight. You're good. Yeah, You're totally install. good. Got a love install day. <laughs> Yeah, I um, I, I it, it was kind of interesting. I I, I know that we all um, wanted to talk uh, about uh, why today was so special because West Media had put it out there, and uh, I got chills, man. It was actually yesterday they put it out, but I I've shared it. You know, you've shared it. Two pairs shared it, and so forth. But but truth be told, man, um, I think they want this three peat more than what's being let on. And again, this is my opinion. I don't know anything. Um, But what I'm getting at is that more than Mm -hmm. anything, um, you know, you've got uh, an opportunity to make history like we've talked about. And it looks like if everybody buys in, you make some noise again and so forth like that. But that being said, it starts now, starts today when they did the summer workout. So my question to you, Shane, is how yeah. important is that first day, man, honestly? That first day sets the tone. Are you ready to come and compete, or are you just going to be complacent and just go through the motions? 
you've got to come break. You've got to be hungry. you got to know what – right now the biggest target in the, in the state is on our back. You've got to approach every day to get better. If you don't get better, somebody else says, I always tell, always tell my guys, I don't care how hot it is, I don't care how tired you are, and their person on their team going just as hard right now trying to beat you. How bad do you want it? What do you think about it too, Pear? I mean, honestly, that we, we saw that social media thing yesterday. It was it was fire, man, to like actually say, listen, yeah. we were we doing summer workouts. It starts tomorrow. We're doing the work, and it's Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, rest on Wednesday. I mean, you know, you gotta go hard them four days, man. Because here's the thing, like Shane said, that break is gonna be here before you know it. That mandatory two week break where the people go on vacations and all that stuff. Yeah, most of that, you know what I'm saying, that dead period, you really got to you gotta hit it hard before the dead period comes around. Or right, just that those two weeks. I like the way they break up the days and they got that Wednesday as that rest day. With with that Wednesday being the rest day, that's where they need to work on the skills and development. That's when you go to skills and development. If you're going to be resting, treat that as going through routes going through play calls, it, it's got to be like live, breathe, eat football if you're trying to compete for a, a third one of these. Wednesday so should be for a film day. Yeah, Wednesday looking at film or just doing some type of skill in development or a team exercise. Give more team building. But that's what I think that would be for because it, it, it's they got the target on their back. Like, what other school has a podcast dedicated to all their sports and other sports? Like, they're, they're, you know what I'm saying? Or from former guys that actually played at the school. It's true. It's true. I mean, and realistically, it's something that we love to talk about. You know, we're going to love to talk about the previews of the games and the breakdown of the games, you know, when the mm. season's in full swing, just like we did with basketball. You know, we yeah. talked about, you know, and then, of course, it got crazy trying to talk about four games when in reality you'd really talk about two and so Ooh. forth. But, you know, we, football, we were talking about four games. Four games. Like, I, yes. I watched yeah. some of those shows, and those are some of our best shows of, like, talking basketball because – we packed in so many games that we really didn't we didn't really have a genuine basketball season. Like mm-hmm. we we didn't hit our stride. We we after the beard and win, it it took everything out of us at home. Like it just it and the rotation suffered. You know what yeah, I'm saying? It it's like it that's what we don't wanna end up with next year. And that's why I, like I love the approach from what I saw in practice uh i like what i see from mike nelson i love what i see from the team impact with sean smith uh i think sean smith is due for a big summer this year i I really do uh kalu fofana the prince of zamunda i love it but uh, i love it i want to say birch should be back in another week i think he'll be finally cleared to play in another week from the last time it's I called, like four, it's like been four months, man. My goodness, like practically, yeah. so, wow. It's our ligaments, man. Like, <sighs> yeah, um, and that ain't no he's joke. One our, he's one of our best shooters, and I, I just, you know, what I'm saying, I pray, pray for him because I, I love Gary Birch. I, I think, I think he's gonna be a phenomenal player at the next level. I'm just like, if, if, if he got to with a coach who sees the work that this dude puts in to shoot the ball, like he's the best shooter. At, he literally can be the best shooter in Knox County next year. Mm-hmm. Him, Dupree, who's going to get you a bucket anytime. I really like the way Reese is coming into his own again. Um, I think he's a lot better since the ankle, ankle or the knee. But yeah, man, it, it, I, I I love what Devin is doing. He's getting offers left and right. Kevin's getting offers, so we're going to be formidable. I Absolutely. Think. I Absolutely. think it is in and, and and the girls. Cody Cody Graves is he he's changed he's changing the culture. Because I, I kinda like what he's doing with the girls. I, I think the girls team is gonna surprise people. 
I I, I, I I can't wait to see just the competitiveness, you know, with them and so forth. And yeah, that's that's all. We we, yeah. we want to we want to see compete. competitiveness. I want to see girls having fun out there, the guys having fun out there, because that's what it is, man. Mm. I mean, this is an opportunity here. I mm. mean, you know, this is a huge opportunity. And again, like I said, it don't stop until that clock hits zero. Make what you clock do in zero. between, but right, right there, like, like, like this is your opportunity. And you know, it's like I was saying when I started the show you look at it school's over so now you are a senior like you're done with your junior year. you are a senior mm. you are a junior that was once a sophomore <laughs> you were once a freshman you are now a sophomore eighth graders welcome to the party you know so you know uh, hey you want to know something shout out real quick to one of my favorite little movies dazed and confused or what have you like when they went around paddling the eighth graders that were going to be the upcoming freshmen and so forth like that would never be allowed now like that was like the class of 1976 and it was like a rite of passage that if you were a rising senior you would wait for the eighth graders and paddle them and so forth like that and then they'd sign your paddle afterwards or whatever like that nowadays it ain't nothing like that so shoot. Well, you can't haze anyone anymore you can't and can't so we will talk about the Marine Corps days. Oh, know. I can only imagine that. Oof. So yeah, yeah. By the way, happy Memorial Day to those that didn't quite make it back. You know, uh, the, the, your your uh, service, um, at least in I can speak for myself and for the show, it was uh, very much appreciated. And very much appreciated. Uh, we wouldn't even be here if it wasn't for for uh, any of those that fought in all the wars oh. and the conflicts over the years. So yeah, shout out to yeah. those and you, the brothers that you lost, brother along the way so yeah, yeah. May, their may their names never fade and memory live forever amen amen um so we got some big news coming up and i hope that those that are watching the show if you're in town man i think that it would be such a great little fun thing to do but uh aubrey's paper mill next saturday i think it's eight o'clock maybe nine o'clock i want to say nine and it's mm -hmm. going to be the Pancake Football Breakfast, June 8th. It's a Saturday morning at the Aubrey's on Paper Mill. Um, you know, the dads and the boys are going to be cooking pancakes, and the boys are going to be serving them. It's $5 to get in, $5. And you get, a pan you get pancakes, you get eggs, you get bacon, and you get orange juice. And, uh, and, and I mean, you can't beat it for 5 bucks, honestly. And, uh, and you get Let to them just know what day there. it is again. It's Saturday. Saturday, June 8th. So definitely be there. I'm going to be there. Um, and uh, a shout out to my guy, Davis Neely, number 45. I got a little present for you next Saturday uh, in your honor and so forth that I do for anybody that wears number 45. I like to give a little donation in the name and so forth. That was my number. So anybody that wears that number gets a donation on behalf of the ah. Italian stallions. So that's just what I like to do. So, but, that's uh, it, man. but yeah, man. Yeah. So any, anything I can do to help and, and, uh, and do it, you know, and so forth. I love supporting this team. This team has given me a lot. And so uh, anytime that uh, we can flash that W, that's all that's important right there. So, hey, man. You know, so, hey, man. You sure. got to. Yeah, but it should be fun. And I'm hoping that a lot of the old guys uh, will show up and uh, people just in general that want to support the program. And uh, I know the boys and everybody will appreciate it. I know they will. So and what time, what time is it? I, I want to say it's eight o'clock or nine o'clock. If you guys want to talk mm -hmm. for a second, let me just look it up because they shared it on the uh, media page on uh on yeah. uh, I was thought it? I saw Twitter. It, it was on Twitter. I know I saw it on Twitter. So um 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. Is it? Oh, so it's 8 a.m. Oh, wow. Okay, gotcha. So, okay. All right. 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. 10 a.m. Yep. And that's going to be um, there at um, at the Aubrey's on Paper Mill. So, yep, 8 to 10. Very good, Shane. Thank you. So, yeah. I may, I may need some pancakes to recover from the night before. <laughs> that's right because he got a birthday and, oh. uh, and that's the other thing we got to promote next week is the roast of Shane O'Mac so we're going to be on at our regular time at 9 o'clock so come bring the heat 
I'm sure he'll uh, love to give us the bird at the end of it or whatever. Oh, like man, that. the so, roast yeah, of shit on that. The roast of shit I, I, I can't. I don't even think I can say a bad thing about Shane. I can't. He's, <laughs> ladies, he is. You're, you're single, right, Shane? You're not dating anyone right now, are you? He's he's available, man. That's father of the year right there, so for sure. So, <laughs> Shout out to anybody that's watching right now. I see I see a few people watching live. I hope they uh, get out there on the comment box and, and just uh, share their piece and so forth it is rebels with a cause and anything that you guys want to talk about we can talk about right now we're just promoting this pancake breakfast that i hope some of our former teammates can attend and and any 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 class of of whatever over the years that played ball at west hell even if you didn't even play ball but you like the team come and show up and have a nice pancake bacon and egg and a, and a nice orange juice with it it'll be great so five bucks five bucks buy me some pancakes that's right that's yeah, right yeah buy me some pancakes that's exactly Not right. Anything, so, yeah, and uh, and shout out. You know, we mentioned the summer workouts too. Uh, that uh, that begin at eight a.m. That Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday started today. Um, you know, they they had this quote: "The only place that success comes before work is in the dictionary." That's from Vince Lombardi. <laughs> That's really deep. That is really deep. Um, also, want to give a uh, promote their uh, uh, the uh, West High Football Golf Tournament that's uh, June third, twenty twenty four, at the Gettys View Country Club. Um, it starts at eight thirty and at one and one thirty p.m. I'm not so much a golfer, maybe you guys are, but uh, if you want to, uh, they still need some volunteers to make this a successful event, and uh, you can definitely uh, uh, do that. So uh, definitely uh, check it out. Uh, the sign up page it's on social media on the West High pages on Facebook and Twitter and wherever else they do it. But uh, definitely, uh, if you want to sign up for that and help out, they're looking for volunteers there. So shout out to that as well. But, uh, but yeah, man, I mean, you know, I always feel like, uh, Shane, the pancake breakfast really culminates the summer workouts. There's something right there, you oh. know, happening and so forth. And uh, I'm just excited, man, because realistically, the summer goes by fast. It yeah, really it does. does. It goes go by, by a lot fast. quicker than it used to. Oh. Yeah, it does. It does. And, you know, then you got that dead period. So that's two weeks. But yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share this story with you guys. Um, I ho I don't know if any of our teammates did it, but um, my parents obviously would take that two weeks, not the full two weeks, but one of those weeks for us to go on our little family vacation. And uh, literally, I always asked my dad to get us a hotel room that had like a fitness center so I could do the weights, you know, and so forth. Yeah. And then I would run on the beach, man. I would like just, you know, Running get the in the sand and so bro. forth, oh you know, God, like, dude. like, I mean, I, I really took it seriously, you know, and loved mm. doing it. And I, I don't know if my, that any of the teammates did that but i'm hoping that the guys have that same mantra that just because it's the dead period you can still do your yeah. own thing you know you, on absolutely just, absolutely, you know, absolutely. yeah you, you got to like I, I always like the way i did my summers was i was always taking you know 250 shots on certain areas of the court, I was working on my handles, working on my fundamentals, working on my handles, working on my fundamentals. And then I love the fact that I would play everywhere. I'd play at the team center. I'd have an I'd play on the Emerald Avenue summer league team just to keep that endurance up, just to, you know what I'm saying, keep keep my my guard up too as well. Like Shane to tell you, from the time I got to Sixth grade to eighth grade, I became a different player. From the time I got to eighth grade to ninth grade, I became a different player. Like, even in football, like, I became uh, – I was, like, a wide receiver, and then I switched over to playing linebacker. You know what I'm saying? Like, And why did you get better, too, Pear? It's, it's a simple phrase. Why, what did you do? Consistency. Consistency. But I was a way better basketball player just because – it, basketball is natural for me. I'm mm -hmm. a I'm a basketball player playing football. You know what I'm saying? Not yeah. a football player playing basketball. Exactly. Uh, uh, with the, with the working too. With me, when I go from when I got really got into football, is my basketball coach is like, I'll get too physical. Because basketball is my first love. Everybody got taller than me. I was like, yeah, we're sick of football. But they're yeah. like, you're. I got too aggressive on the court. I just, you know what I'm saying, I just wish things would have panned out differently, like when he kept that classic, like my, my, 
my freshman class that was on that freshman JV team, that was like a like we were we were pretty nasty. Like you that, that team was loaded. We were nasty. Like I put the put pictures up the other day. I was like, yeah, like we were pretty nasty. We, we, like, we, we could have went. You guys had height too. Like you had like you had height. You had you had everything like on that on that group and so for toughness. So you had yeah, Darius Jones for your toughness. You had Cash Hoggy Ford coming off the bench. You had Rand Thomas, who's tall, block shot, Spike McCamey, Brandon Bell. Like, that list right there. Mm-hmm. You, know you even had then, Thomas Moore before he went to South Doyle. Or where did he go again? Had, had Thomas Moore before he went to Fulton. Fulton, that's it. He went to My, Fulton. Mike, so. Mike, Michael Courtney before he becomes an all-star cornerback for where. Yep. Like, one of the best cornerbacks to ever play it with. For sure. <laughs> So, I mean, like I, I'm just freshman. saying, yeah, Isaac Wilson was on that, on that, I, I believe, team as well. So, yeah, I mean, you guys were, uh, were pretty loaded. I mean, goodness We were loaded. Gracious, so, we yeah. were loaded. And then, and then what's crazy, the next year we get Brian Stanford to go with me and Chad Davis. And then I don't play my sophomore year. I don't play. I don't. Yeah, I don't. I didn't play my sophomore year. Shane will tell you I played it. I played it. West Bearded. Yep. Give giving them hell. That's funny. <laughs> giving them hell. Yeah, giving me hell. I play against you. <laughs> really? So hold on. Was it, was that my sophomore year? Or my my junior year, we won the city. Yeah. I we won the city. Sophomore. That's cool. I aged out after. Yeah. I aged out after sophomore year because that's back then. Back then, I went to sixteen. I aged out after sophomore year. Oh, okay, okay. Okay. Yeah, that was my last year playing West Virginia. And then I played played again for West. Went through all the fall league, summer league, all that. Played all that. Made made the made the summer league team and had one of the best summers of my life. Wow. That was one of the best summers of my life. Yeah. Cause you know what I'm saying, just going into my junior year, going into my senior year. But then I got hurt playing fucking football. <laughs> <laughs> Happens to the best of us, man. So no, I, I had more injuries from basketball than football. Really? Yep. But you know what, though? I, I love what, what, like, me and Amos Colbert, we talk about it all the time. Like, Wes, Wes helped me learn about politics. Like, I, I really understand what, like, I understand about not missing a day of conditioning. I understand about showing up to practice on time before everybody else. You know what I'm saying? Like, Wes taught me that. And you know what I'm saying? It's like, Wes put me in that mindset of having that, like, you got to do all of this to get the consistency. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and and I learned it. I learned it from Coach Pecco. Like, I, Coach Pecco and um, Coach Carruthers. Shout out to Coach Petco too, man. Just running that math department at the KCS there and wherever they're at now. I think they're at the TV, the old TVA building. They're not in AJ anymore, but uh, he's man, still running that that's thing. That's my guy. So, yep, for that's sure. That's my guy. Like he, Love Coach he put Petco. me, Coach Petco put me in some of the best situations. Like uh, I came in the Corns game that we were gonna lose. I get the rebound. They uh they fouled me, so I gotta shoot an and I gotta I gotta shoot a one and one. I make both free throws. And then in the overtime, I'm I'm wanting to call my own shot. <laughs> Let me do everything. Coach just said, nah, you can sit right here. <laughs> <laughs> Coach Pat go. He 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 uh, he ex that. <laughs> so I hit a I hit a buzzer beater. I hit a buzzer beater against Webb. Like I hit a buzzer beater. It, it's like one. I hit a. I hit. I hit two buzzer beaters actually that year. I hit a buzzer beater Catholic, and I hit one against Webb. Oh man, you were just trolling Dutchtown Road over here, or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so I hit the buzzer beater, and then I, I just looked. I looked at Coach or whatever. <laughs> And I'm talking about like it was one of the craziest shots I've ever taken to. Wow. And I hit it and I look I'm looking at Celeste. Celeste is like looking at me and I'm like 
<laughs> holding my hand, holding my hand. I don't even know why I did that. It, it held there for the longest time. <laughs> I didn't even know where my sideline was. I just, <laughs> just walking. Coach Pecker will tell you about that, bro. Like I, I really did that job. Like I, some of the stuff I used to do in West at West Bearden. I ain't even gonna lie. I was just trying stuff, and it was working. I, it was just working. <laughs> Yeah, I heard her songs. I just sit back like, yeah, I'm just going to do this thing. <laughs> I remember there was one game we were playing against each other. You're like, just shoot us again. I'm like, shoot in the shot. <laughs> hey, man, am I am I not, like, the funniest guy to go against, like, in basketball? Oh, yeah. Like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm very, I'm, I'm competitive, but. Yeah. I'm, I'm not there joking most of the time. Yeah, you're not like you're what? like serious trash talk. You're not serious. Oh, no, no, like, yeah, like, yeah. Well, see, the thing was on this show, like he knew I could make it. I'm just saying, like I was like, yeah, I'm not making this. <laughs> like I just knew my game. The guys on his team used to talk so much to me, and I'm like Shane. He really don't know. Like I'm, I'm <laughs> like this on this court. That's crazy. I, I, you know, I think about that. Like, I'm sorry, I didn't play West Beard. And honestly, I, I didn't even really know that they, you could do that. Like, and like for the high school kids and so forth. I thought it kind of ended in middle school or whatever. But what so, so, what was cool about our West Bearding team? We were coached by a student. Mm-hmm. Jonas Adams was my coach. My, Jonas, my well, okay, all right, okay. I want, I want to say this, man. Jonas Adams. Is the best coach I've ever played for in basketball. Like, Coach Pecco is a great coach, but Jonas, Jonas allowed me to play my game. Jo- like, Coach Pecco is probably, Coach Pecco and Coach Lindsay are like, they're neck and neck for two and three for me, mm-hmm. just because, like, I really didn't maximize what I should have with, with them. Like, I, I really didn't. And a lot of it's on me, you know what I mean? Like, I was into it with the thought of, like, I got a shot to be playing behind Stu Oaks and Chad and A.B. Like, I can play behind them guys. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I can play behind them. You know what I'm saying? And he just he didn't want to go that direction. And, it, you know what I'm saying? It sucks. But when I, when I play with Jonas, James, when I tell you, we ran through that league. I think we may have lost. Yeah, ran through. Ran through that league. We had me and Cash. Cash is one of my favorite teammates of all time. Uh, Tony Taylor, who was a problem. The legend of the great Justin Frost. <laughs> oh, I know who Justin Frost is. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> me and, me and uh, Justin's brother Jeremy got into it during game one year. Jeremy, okay, cool, cool story. So <laughs> Jeremy's at our yeah, Jeremy's at our games all the time. Uh, this team was really loaded. Uh, Robert Frazier, I don't know if y'all know him. He went to West. Robert Frazier, I've heard the name. Yeah, Robert Frazier. Robert Frazier was a a three point assassin on our. He's team. a marksman. Dude, Dude, he was hitting every – oh, the great Omar Jabron was on this team. <coughs> he went to West, yeah. didn't he, Omar Jabron? He went to West. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Bro, I know who Omar when is. I, when I say we had a really – we had a really, really good team. Like, this was – this was like a championship-level team. And, and it just all worked together, man, and all. Yeah, we we won the city. We won the the West Beard and Lee, but we lost in the city championship game. We we played. We just got lackadaisical one game, and it ended up hurting us because it was a double elimination. So we had to beat the same team twice in one night. Just, because uh, you messed around in the one game or whatever like that. Yeah, those same yeah. tournaments back then. You were playing like they tried to get that stuff knocked out on a weekend. You were playing like all weekend. Yeah, I played. It was the rest. You were bouncing all over town. I played some of my best basketball during that time. Uh, I, I will say though, Cash bailed us out. Cash bailed us out of a game. Tony bailed us out of a game. 
They built, yeah, they, they built us out of a lot of games. I not what year it was, me and Cash were on a team, and we were both like a f- one foul away from fouling out. Our coach only told us to play with our hands behind our back the whole game, rest of the game. Like make the ref make that call pretty much. Yeah, like, I, like that, yeah, yeah. If I knew what I knew now, they were running a box and one on me, and I didn't know, I didn't understand that at that time. But had I not had we not had to play them twice because they ran the box and won the second time we played them because I man I, I'm talking about I was running that break on them it was I was throwing I was throwing alley oops to Darius Jones like it was crazy nice. like James James Stewart is still doing this <laughs> <laughs> James shout out to my man James Stewart Stick shout out to him yeah, that that was his nickname right Sticks or Sticks. what he's still he's still doing this. <laughs> you know, it, it's funny you mentioned something that that really I don't think gets enough credit. You know, you had the coaches. You just you admit that you didn't put the work in that you could have. You know, I, I, and, yeah, exactly. And you look at these guys. You know, are they just going to just you know collect? Oh yeah, we were part of the 2022, 2023 back to back state championship teams. Or are you going to put the work in to make your legacy? You know, like these coaches, I love this coaching staff. I know that I've bragged I do about too. it. I, I mean, do they too. Just, and the, if they stay together, I mean, Lamar, if he keeps this staff together and they continue to get the support of the community, the one West that we have preached on this show, there's no telling how far we can take this thing, man. I mean, we're in the second, third inning at this point. Like, I mean, I have to give a shout out to my tribal chief, like always, but I'm just saying, I foresee this, this could go a while, but it starts today of what you did that first day in the workout room. And then like you talked about, what do you guys do on your own time? I mean, listen, go to the pool, have a good time. You know, all that stuff, go to the mall, go to movies, whatever y'all do these days. But what I'm getting at is this, take that extra time if everybody's right there, let's go up to the field and let's throw. Like, let's get our timing down. Let's let's run plays. Let's let's just do something. And uh, you do that on your own, man. It's fun day on Fridays, man. It, the, the fall will be fun. It's just going to be fun. It's just going to be repetition. You put the hard work in now. You just go and take care of business, and that's what we do. We take care of business. So simple as that. So um, I do want to transition, Shane. Um, a couple big news, uh, these last couple of weeks, and it involves Wes's first two opponents. And, uh, I'd like you to just bring that up of, of what kind of has been going down with Bearden and Clinton, respectively, Uh, uh, our first two opponents. So Bearden's had two massive transfers come out of the program. Mm. With Murray Smith, but that's been a couple months back now, head to Maribel. And then you got Chaz Smith. Who's got 30 D1 offers going to Macaulay? Mm, that's big. That's huge. The rich that's get huge. richer in Macaulay. So, yeah, but Macaulay, I mean, rich I, get richer. I find that one a little weird because he's already got all the, he's got the offers. He's got the film. He's got, what's the reason? I mean, unless he's, unless he's trying to get another like major offer, but he's, I'm pretty sure he's got an Alabama offer. He's got a Tennessee offer. I can go through the list. He's got Auburn. I mean, he's got Auburn too. I mean, Virginia yeah. Tech. So, uh, Florida yeah. State. Um, it's a beast. But hey, yeah. do what's best for you. Yeah. Do well, it would have been interesting to see our guys match up with him on that left or right side, wherever they have him lined up. And you know, I know Bearden still has a plethora of talent, but man, you don't re- you don't replace someone like that, man. I mean, that's that's like. That's got to be a shot at somebody there. I don't know. I don't know what happened. Uh, so, yeah. And then uh, Clinton, uh, been reading up on that one, saw the notice from uh, their athletic director, Nate Martin. But uh, the new coach they have coming in is Jason Hammock, who spent the last 10 years before retiring as their OC. Oh, wow. Well. 23 years of coaching between Clinton Middle School, High School, and Grace Christian. Okay. So he's got he's got the one year contract just until they find somebody they want to put in place. I'm curious how it goes. And now, they start know. out with they start out with Cleveland, and then they got West game too. So yeah. that's their. Uh, the higher, the higher mm. it's the that's tough. Hold on, they got West. No Hold on. Who started out with Cleveland? 
Um, well, so so Clinton starts off with a home game against Clinton, like the first game of the week, the year or whatever. Yeah, yeah, then yeah. they travel on the road to us. Like our opening home game is is Clinton. So they they come to the defending champs, and you know that'll be the first time you get to see the banner, and you know the stadium's going to be lit oh, up yeah, and everything. Be so be yeah, it'll be fun. They're gonna, gonna be serving. They're gonna be serving Italian ice. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all, all them stands, man. They're gonna have the lemonade thing and all that stuff. So yeah. Oh, they're gonna have the lemonade. Oh man, they're gonna have the lemonade. Damn. I got Last the year they had the donuts. They the, the 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 good donuts, duck donuts, or whomever had a little thing there, and they were selling them over there. Yeah, them donuts were crazy, man. Yeah. Them donuts are crazy. It's like going I to the carnival, you. man. It's going to carnival. So. <laughs> yeah, I'm, 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 I'm definitely making, I'm definitely making all the home games this year. I'm definitely making all the home games. This year. It's a great slate of games, honestly. I mean, you've got it Clinton. Is. It really is. I mean, yeah. you've got Clinton. You've got Central. The return of Kevin Lane. You know, that's going to be big. Maryville coming, trying to break that two game <laughs> to West. Then you've got um, the uh, the great homecoming game with Heritage, and then you've got uh, Senior Night against Anderson County on a Thursday night. So there is some fun games there that will be uh, at home. And then the road games are all within driving distance. I mean, you've got Alcoa, Bearden. Uh, we still need to find out about that with where that game's going to be played. Uh, Farragut, and then is of course, parking, obviously, uh, Powell and Halls uh, trips is to parking, every road. Is parking still a, is parking still a beast? It was. At on West, Friday night. yeah, it it, it kind of is, and so forth. I mean, especially <laughs> now that they're good, man. I mean, it's it's it a is. tough ticket. So I get ticket. I get a little bit of special privilege being in the box that I have a back parking lot guest pass. So there's okay. that. So yeah, but, yeah, because I'm I'm definitely going to part by the weight room because this is this is ridiculous. Like yeah. these these dudes, I ain't never really I I didn't realize like how good we were yeah. until I couldn't get a parking spot. Mm-hmm. Like and it, that, that's when you know that's when you're good, man. I I think I parked in my old apartment up in Presswick. <laughs> <laughs> oh my you know goodness! I, mean? I think yeah. I parked in my old. I think I parked in my old apartment. I like. I won't notice this is my old car anyway. <laughs> Well, and I'll tell you one thing: don't park across the street because they'll tow you and not even think twice about it. And 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 you know what the sad thing is, man? Half that damn shopping center's for lease anyway. That should be the name of it: for lease. For I'm, lease. There's yes. nothing even there anymore. The pizza place went out of business. So. <laughs> How can you get mad if somebody parked in a parking lot that no one? All you got over there is Subway and a laundromat that sometimes ain't open. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, <laughs> hey man, <laughs> they, they, they got they call it such and such suds. <laughs> Jeez, well, yeah, no. and the such and such ain't open or whatever. But like such and such it, closed or what have it, you. It's so, such a suck Is it's that sake? Is, is is that what is it? The Japan, the Japanese food place. What's it called? The um, is it kimchi? Is it kimchi? Oh, no, is it kimchi? Kimchi. Osaka. Is it, Osaka. Is it kimchi? Yeah, is that still open? Yo, I don't know if they're still open. Okay, we need to check out Shane. See if Osaka like, is still open. See if that's okay. still open. Wow. I know the pizza place went out of business. But... This is how bad this this is how bad it is. You you got to start parking. You get you got to start you got to start parking at like Third Creek. That's how bad to pack the games. Or you gonna be parking at Gus's. You are gonna be parking at Savelli. That's how packed these games are. Mm-hmm. You're gonna have to start parking in the apartment complexes. That's how packed these games are gonna be. Like, mm-hmm. I, I'm just ready for. I'm I'm ready to see my, my man Jack Keith, my man uh, Elijah Gardner. Who, man, <coughs> Elijah Gardner, your Twitter is serious. Twitter is serious, Elijah Gardner. What about old Wyatt DeRoche, baby? I want to see what DeRoche, DeRoche does. DeRoche. Yeah, and my guy, shout out to Antoine DeRoche. Burdine, man. Antoine Burdine Jr. I mean, it says they're still open. From number one. It's still open? Yeah. All right, so there's three things in that shopping center, and I doubt that, you, you know, I mean, oh, my goodness. So, isn't there a Dollar General separate right next to there, its own little oh. building or whatever, the Dollar General? It's got its own build. Yeah, yeah. It's you got park, its own you, might have to, you might have to park there. 
Oh, shoot. They might tow you. Because, you, you know, everybody's also, there on so, Friday so, night. The, the amount of towing like the armory used to be back in our day when they filled it all in. The armory. Man, you remember we parking at the armory. Oh, the good I, parked at my, I parked at my now ex-wife's mother's house, which was on, like, that neighborhood right across from school. Mm-hmm. That was a good old really. I just parked there. <laughs> Man, well, don't I'm park in the about... intramural fields. You might get your car stuck there. If they close that gate, it's done. So, I mean, don't park when... inside the intramural fields. So, shoot. I remember. I remember the days when uh, <laughs> I I would get I would get uh, I would get my homeboy uh, Clark coffee to just like, hey, man, let me can you give me a quick ride to the crib. <laughs> like, I live right up the street. So that's awesome. That's yeah, awesome. man. Cause I, I definitely, I, 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 I yeah, I walked to, to school. It was like right down the hill. You know what I'm saying? So. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, I mean, I just love that we have like a great home crowd advantage. You know, like it's loud and and the the, the cowbell and all that stuff's playing and and you know the sirens and it's just a spectacle and the facility is just gorgeous. I can't stress it. Man, it is. Yeah. I really this is what blows my mind about Knox County, though. Every school got the multicolored lights, right? Yeah, every school has them. Do you know they won't let you use them? I know they're so stupid. They they furnish them. It's like you. Why would you waste hmm. money on that and then you can't even use it? I mean, that's that's, that's wow. dumb. The rule that I got on because I asked about it because I hit the lights once and I got yelled at. It's because when those colored lights have to come on, there's a delay which shuts out all the lights in the state. Oh wow. And at no point during a TWS double A sanctioned event can the lights go completely black. Except at Alcoa. But anyway, <laughs> except at Alcoa. So, yeah. <laughs> And there's no, no, no penalty on that. Hey, that was part of the experience, Shane, of the blackout experience. They all wore their black shirts that night, you know, and so forth. Mm. So they just figured, let's just turn the lights off and, and help the team win or whatever yeah. like that. So, shoot. All I'm saying, man, is that if they if Bearden had held on to the ball, Bearden would have won that game. That's mm. it. If they don't, they don't fumble going across that goal line and gave them life, Bearden beats them. Yeah, from, from my angle, I thought he was in. I was like, like, did we score? Like, I was looking at the scoreboard. Like, no, he fumbles. Like, God. Yeah. Well, you know what the other thing, too, is I just still, with, with Maryville losing to West, Bearden, and Farragut, respectively, how the hell did they put it together to beat Alcoa, man? Like, I mean, like, you would have thought going – I mean, that's why it's a rivalry game, you know, at the end of the day. But realistically, yeah. if Alcoa had, like, the, the – the, if this if that was the year that Alcoa could have maybe run up the score on them and made it look pretty good, I thought that's what was going to happen. And then Gage Ledoux had a complete different you know mindset yeah. and probably had the best game he had since breaking his leg and so forth in that first mm-hmm. game. Yeah. So how he came know, back in within the same season from that? He's a freak man, he's a freak, and Air Force has got a beast over there. Honestly, that's yeah, a, that's dude. that's Wolverine. Really man. That's, that, that's the real Logan right there. So yeah, so but. Uh, um, you know, I wanted to switch gears, you know, um, about uh, the high school football and everything to uh, NBA basketball. Um, you know, I said that the Celtics were going to sweep the Pacers, so I want to give a shout out to myself on that one. And, and I'm the Pacers, you, the, what, are, what, are the pay, what are the Pacers? They stink. They stink. Couldn't they even stink. get one game at home, and then they blew that huge lead. They stink. So, just awful. They definitely stink. They, they, they stink. They, they stink. That's got to be one of the worst Eastern Conference final teams of all time right there, honestly. I mean, it really <laughs> was the Celtics and the Seven Little Dwarfs in this past uh, playoffs. I mean, in, at least in the East. It feels yeah, like that. It was, oh, shoot. It was a, that was a waste of a series. Like, the, the Conference Finals have been bad. Like They have. You know, like, you're expecting basketball to go. I feel like I feel like either they're in a rush to get to Perry, but I don't think anybody's even on. So yeah, there's a few guys that may be playing for their respective countries in Paris. 
Yeah, I mean, I can see that. I, I think the other yeah. thing, too, is I'm just shocked at Minnesota. Um, and Minnesota could still win tonight, you know, and everything and take it back to Minnesota. But the fact that they didn't even get one or game two at home to pair, I mean, that was just shocking. And I'm telling you, Kyrie and Luca, I mean, they are really just enjoying playing with each other. And uh, I don't know. I mean, it's just it's just very interesting, honestly, how uh, these series have gone. I mean, hell, even the Miami depleted Heat got one game on the Celtics, and the Pacers couldn't even get one. I couldn't mean, get one. Couldn't get, couldn't, couldn't get your best player to even play. He's yeah. hurt. I mean, the Cavs He's even hurt. got a game on the Celtics, you know? I mean, so. And and you mean to tell me the Pacers, you got smoked like, like a Swisher sweep for four straight games? Yeah, like, they just got smoked, man. It just they stink. it just was not it wasn't fun to watch. They stink. Well, they, and let they, me ask you this: Do, do, do you guys think stink. that the moment's just too big for the Timberwolves right now? I mean, obviously they could. I mean, yeah, you know, it's not out of the possibility, um, but they could they could win the next four and you know complete a a, a three nothing you know. Uh, um, yeah. yeah, but is it just because maybe they're too young, or did that Nuggets series just take everything out of them? I mean, to beat the defending champs like that, to beat the defending champs, and then the 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 way they lost the first two games at home, like that's the first time you've had a conference finals game in your arena in twenty years, and you get. Smoked, like <laughs> not like. I mean, the second game was close. Um, the first game, like, damn, like you you let Kyrie do this, and now Kyrie's redirected his legacy. All of a sudden, now he's everybody's favorite basketball player. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and everybody's right. wanting the storybook ending that he beats the Celtics, and yeah, and I'm, right. I'm saying, it's gonna happen. I mean, it's gonna happen. <sighs> That'd be crazy if it happened. Can I like, how, how about the irony? The irony, yeah. though. Oh yeah, the irony. Yeah. If he were to go into Boston and to beat Boston after what they've done as a team, it's like, bro, y'all had this guy. Mm-hmm. You, you did have him. He did play with Tatum. Am I correct in that? He did play with Tatum. And Jalen right? Brown. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. That's crazy. Wasn't Gordon Hayward on that team, too? Jesus. So yeah, wow. And Terry well, Rozier. And, and Terry, Terry Rozier. Rozier. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I was going to ask you, um, two pair. Is Kristop done, or is he going to be back? Like, is it over, Porzingis? What's what's going on? Well, they said he would be available for the first. They said he would either be available. Let me let me look at this again. They I mean, because I'm just shocked he's not back yet. I mean, so shoot. Yeah, I am too. I am too, to be honest with you. They're going to need him if they want to take on the Mavericks. Now, I know the Mavericks might be dealing with something with the whole uh, Derek Lively with the sprained neck and so forth, and you hate to see that because that boy was balling and so forth. Yeah, Derek Derek Lively uh, with that sprained neck, uh, the way it happened, I want to say Carl Anthony Towns hit the back of his head on a – on, on just a play where he was trying to get a rebound. He'd actually fell on the ground, and uh, he had got the back of his neck. It was really, really sad because he was having a great series. He's been having a great playoffs. Yeah, just, and he, and he you know, had like just, six points right off the bat in that first quarter right before, off the he bat. Got, before he got hurt. So, you know. Yeah, but, he, he's, definitely, he's definitely had a incredible series, man, like – just think He's that if, I mean, no disrespect to Tatum or um, or Brown, but I just think mm-hmm. we we talked about it in the last show the duet of Luca and Kyrie, and I think Terry Maples would agree with us. Shout out to our quarterback Terry Maples. Uh, mm-hmm. Literally, um, I think that Kyrie and Luca are superior, Shane, to, uh, oh, to, yeah. to, to 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 Tatum and Brown at this point. So yeah, mm, Ky- Kyrie, Kyrie and Luca are putting on the show. It it has been some of the most entertaining basketball I've I've watched in a long time. Just like from from an entertainment standpoint, 
of how they're dissecting this team to they're 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 saying if we keep the game close, we can close the game. Just keep the game close, we close the game. And and that's the way they've been doing it, man. It's pretty impressive. But Boston really didn't have to worry about anything in the East. Like I, I, once, once Milwaukee lost, it, 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 the, the East is not really strong this year. No, no. I mean, they and honestly, strong. a lot of people could have even said that had the Heat been fully healthy, maybe the Heat are the ones that are back in there again. You know what I mean? Like because the Heat kind of had been the the, the Celtics' kryptonite, and you know, it yeah, took all these did. injuries to happen. So yeah, it, it took it took the Heat being very depleted. Because if, if he did full strength, we we're knocking a lot of these teams out. Like it's, they don't want to see Miami when it when it when in playoff time. Just, just let them don't let Miami get somebody like Dalton Connect in the draft. Mm-hmm. Like don't let him fall to Miami. <laughs> don't let him fall to Miami. Let if he fell to, to Miami, Miami, man, I think Pat Riley would draft him in a heartbeat. Honestly, I uh, really heartbeat. believe that. So yeah, he 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 not dra- he not falling before eight. If 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 Dalton Connect is either he needs to be the seven or eight. I, I really think him playing if he plays with Victor, mm. the uh, the amount of shots that this man is going to be able to take with playing with somebody like that. Mm-hmm. And don't leave him open. Don't leave him open. Leave him so, open. Yeah, I mean, shoot. <laughs> I, I wouldn't be mad if he was in Memphis. I wouldn't be mad. If Don Connect, if Don Connect is either in Memphis, San Antonio, or Miami, I wouldn't be mad. I, I would be, I'd be okay if he's in, if he's in Miami, I'm, I'm oh yeah, we'd be, we'd be, we'd, yeah. yeah, we'd be, we'd be thrilled. I, I just look yeah. at, I just look at at Memphis like they had such a young, promising nucleus, and it just seems like it's crap now. It's just horrible. I mean, you know, ah, shame. man, a real shame. It, man. it is a shame, man, because I, I, I really think they had, a, they had something going, man. They really yeah. did. They got a good fan base over there, too. You know, say what you will about the city and everything like that. Like, Mm -hmm. they really support Memphis basketball and, like, not only NBA, but also college, obviously. They've always liked the the Tigers. So, yeah. Yeah, the Tigers always do. So, let me ask you this. If, if, uh, I guess, is it... Um, regardless of who wins between Minnesota and Dallas, and obviously Minnesota would not only have to win tonight, but they'd have to win them all. But my question is this. Who hosts? Who's the home team? Is it the Celtics by default because they were the one seed in the East? Is that how it goes? Or? Well, they got the best record in the NBA. Oh wow! So they even so so even if it had been chalk, they would have hosted because they had a better record than OKC. Or uh, yeah, okay. Yes, yeah, yeah. Wow! Yeah. They, wow. They got a better record that. than OKC. I didn't realize that. Yeah, they won like sixty something. They won like sixty games. <laughs> Props to them. I mean, geez. Yeah, they didn't. They didn't lose. They didn't lose too much. <laughs> well, well, I'll I'll tell you one thing. I'm looking at this now, and I hope I'm not too ahead of you guys or whatever. Um, it's 83-83 with about 8:20 to go. Mavericks got the ball. Kyrie's doing his thing. So I mean, it just looks like uh, is this prime time for them to close them out? So you know, and the crowd's into it. They're all standing up. So. Mm. Yeah. Um. One thing that uh, I wanted to ask you guys: Did anybody uh, catch the uh, the the King of the Stink? Oh no, I mean the uh, the the King of the Ring on Saturday and Saturday <laughs> or whatever. I, so, I was I was glued to college baseball. <laughs> Oh, oh we got to talk about that. No, no, no. We got to talk about that. Yeah, I go ahead. Go, go, go. College baseball. <laughs> Yo, I have never watched as much college baseball. In my life, I, I'm I'm talking about. Look, man, man, let me let me let me shout out my man Billy Amick. Billy Amick with the with the best two that two run no three was it three run shot two run shot. Man, this man hit a home run so beautiful Sunday against so the cool. LSU Tigers. He's a beast. Was it a two run homer, Shane? Uh- I want to say it was a two run homer because we needed it. And that was what put yeah, us up. It was 3 1. It was 3 yeah. 1. Yeah, because we won 4 3. 
Yeah. But man, when I tell you LSU won a wild game against, was that uh, uh, was it Vanderbilt? South Carolina. South Carolina. Yeah, because Tennessee Yo, knocked out Vanderbilt. So I yeah. won't say this: South Carolina. Cole Messina put on a show this weekend. Cole Messina put on the show. Christian Moore put on the show too. Christian Moore played well. Yeah, I mean, let's talk about that for a second. Tennessee baseball got the number one overall seed, um, and I think that the was triple the first time in program history. So, yeah, I one mean, regular season and one the SEC and yeah. the tournament and the right. tournament now, and That's- and so now. They they get Knoxville right. They they get to play Southern Miss, and there's a couple other teams in that bracket. And then, mm-hmm. um, and then if they win that one by chalk, if all the national seeds progress, they would play the 16. And then if mm-hmm. uh, they win that one, they would play the winner of the eight and nine uh, game. And so mm-hmm. for, I think Florida State so was eight. They will play Southern Miss. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I, honestly, I, I, they got a good shot. Man, they do got a good shot. I love, man. Shout out to Tony Vitello. You are you are doing a hell of a coaching job. Yeah, Tony Vitello is pushing all the right buttons at the that right dude time. Like, loves this university. Like, man, he's the he's the best coach. He, he he might be the he might be the best coach at the university right now. I I would argue yes, and it's only because. His teams have at least gotten to Omaha. They were one bad, bad third game against Notre Dame from going back to Omaha. They've got a great shot to go to Omaha this year and win it all. So, I mean, you know, it's they they've got the they've got the weapons. They definitely do got the weapons. And uh, realistically, I I don't think that that's far fetched, guys. I really do not in terms of uh, the uh, the fact that he is the best coach. I mean, I'll tell you this: for the teams to be is competitive like you know football we're excited to see what ut football does this year um mm-hmm. UT basketball look they were one uh a few controversial plays away from going to their first final four but they final four. another elite eight so they were there in the conversation at the end and really gave us a lot of fun and stuff to talk about and baseball team has just continued it on and that's when you know that it's good when uh, all your sports keep you interested for the whole year you know what i mean shout it's out to the lady uh the lady ball softball team too man yeah man they came up short against <laughs> alabama unfortunately that sucked yeah. i mean they they, they, they Mm. That 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 good fourteen inning game took a lot out of them. Like that it was did. the longest the longest softball game in the history of mm. women's softball. And, and then the next day, and then the next day they give up a grand slam right off the bat, and then there's a four hour rain delay. So you know, you it, it took them. I mean, they they didn't have no juice. They didn't have nothing yeah. left. I mean, so they didn't have anything left, man. It, so, it was really. It was really sad the way the Lady Vols bowed out this season. They were like, I really thought we were going to have the Lady Vols go to Oklahoma, the men in Omaha. Like, I thought that would have been just an awesome way to end your spring. Like, it would you know have been. It would have been an awesome way to end the spring. Because very rarely do you see both programs in the men and women's uh, in softball or baseball both go to those respective things. I think Oklahoma did it one year or something because mm-hmm. Oklahoma women's softball is a beast and uh, the Oklahoma men's baseball has, has been good. I- I'm going to tell you this, man, you know, we've talked about it in the other sports, but damn, with Oklahoma and Texas joining the SEC in these softball and baseball, wow. man, they just made it even more of a bloodbath, honestly, in baseball mm-hmm. and softball. That's, that's in baseball. In, in baseball, they made it tough because the SEC is already a tough conference in baseball because South Carolina is really good. Kentucky oh, yeah. is really good. Vanderbilt, yeah, Texas A&M. Texas A&M. Oh, oh, Texas A&M. Oh. Kentucky, A&M. Kentucky's your two seed. Kentucky's your number two seed. I mean, so. Oh, so I, I still don't know how Kentucky was claiming uh, regular season champs for a game was even done. It's Kentucky. Yeah, that was weird. Yeah, it was weird. That was weird. They're still licking but, their but, wounds from basketball. <laughs> but you know, oh my gosh. Uh, still from basketball. Oh, they lost first round, right? 
That's right. Oh, that's right. <laughs> to that yeah. one kid. Or he wasn't even a kid. He was 26 years old or whatever. And firing yeah, three. They lost so. Oh, no, they didn't use it. Yeah, they lost to Oakland. Oakland. To Oakland. Yeah, that's it. Oakland. So. Oakland. <laughs> Oakland. Damn, they did lose to Oakland. Damn, they lost to Oakland. That's right. That's right. Damn, they lost to fucking Oakland. Yeah. yeah Crazy. They lost to Oakland. Hey, now this game has actually been good though. This, oh, this yeah. Minnesota Dallas game has actually been good. It's amazing right? when you when you're fly, when your back's against the wall, you know what I mean? So shoot. Mm, that was big. That was big, Carl Anthony Towns. That was big, Carl Anthony Towns. That was big. Carl Anthony Towns just just he just he just said, "I gotta have an NBA moment." He'd been kind of quiet this series till then. He has been real quiet, like rebounding wise, he's been great. But that was a shot he needed because he shot so bad the last game. I think he was zero for eight. Hey, like, at the at at the. After four, they, you know what I'm saying? It, it don't don't shoot no more. <laughs> After four of them things, and you, eight of them is tough. If you don't miss your first four, you, you got to switch it up. You you got to get to the paint. You you got to be able to. You got to be able to get something in the midi. You got to be able to get something in the paint. Like show me that you go into the paint. Now you got to show me you going to the bank. Oh, um, you know, you were talking about uh, Shane watching college baseball instead of the uh, the pay per view. Yeah. Um, I heard that the uh, best match was actually the Liv Morgan um, uh, Becky Becky uh, uh, wrestling Becky Lynch? match. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Wow. Oh, succeeded. Right, man. I'm sorry, bro. Well, they finally made Liv champion, so they did that. And now that she kisses Dom Dominic Mysterio, I mean, this guy's gotten more action than <laughs> he's known for the being a ladies' man with Liv Morgan and Ray Ripley, two of the hottest wrestling babes, or what have you. So, yeah. Hey, man, I'm a Rhea Ripley fan. I like Rhea Ripley. Oh, I love Rhea. Oh, I do. I, I do. love. I love Rhea Ripley, man. Like what? I'm I'm a bigger Bianca Belair fan though. I, I like I like uh I just like her overall athleticism as a wrestler. Like Bianca gets she gets nasty with it. Like just her And her shout speed. out to her. She's expecting her first child. She's she's pregnant, yeah, I believe. So pregnant, shout out to man. her. Yeah. So shout yeah, out her to Montez. And, and shout out to the big donation she gave uh Austin East High School, man. That was pretty cool. That was really cool, the big donation she gave them. Yeah, she man. was Shout a out track Taylor. star there. So I mean, man, and, UT, hell, and, UT. and UT and UT, like, <laughs> like Bianca Belair, man. Just telling you, so one of the goats, one of the goats. But you know what, man? Like, I, I feel, I, I feel like this has been kind of the. It's not been a good after WrestleMania pay per view, like. Horrible. Like at the WrestleMania, you kind of get the lulls a little bit. Like with um, what's it called? What's the first pay per view right after? Backlash, backlash, backlash. Yeah, yeah. back backlash. You know what I'm saying? Backlash is always like <coughs> that's the turning point pay per view. It me. is. It is. It's the turning point pay per view of where the company is going. Like is is the company after WrestleMania? Where is the company going after Backlash? Is is like what I what I think of. But this King of the Ring, this shit wasn't even memorable. Like well, I, I, I didn't even watch. I, I was gonna watch it. I was gonna watch a little bit of it. I watched some of it uh, before I went to work today, and I can't remember one match that was it, memorable. It, it stunk. I mean, I don't even know about the Cody Rhodes Logan Paul match or what. I mean, like, like here's the thing, guys, and and Shane chime in on this. 
do you think it was a mistake that WWE like there? I want you to think about this. Their WrestleMania was was a huge weekend, but your next three pay per views didn't even happen in the states. I mean, they went to um, Paris, uh, Paris, Australia, Australia. And- and now there's you know, Saudi Arabia, and where's Clash of the Castle? Clash of the Castle is going to be in uh, Britain or, yeah. or or Wales or what have you. So you're not even having the pay per views in America, like or anything like that. And it's almost like you knew your product is going to be shit, but you're going to get pops and everything because these people don't get pay per views yeah. over there. You know what I mean? They it's, don't get very, anything. They don't yeah, get yeah, that goes off the time from that we all get our custom watching it because middle of the day. On a weekend, there's yeah. other stuff going on. Yeah, they getting they getting they get excited with a drop key. They they get they get excited. You know what I'm saying? They, they get excited with a suplex, like it, they're not like yeah. or a hip toss. <laughs> Shane, Shane, what was the card? Can you pull up the King of the Ring card by any yeah. chance? I want I want to know how horrible this. I mean, because these people paid a lot, but they're you know they're these rich oil sheiks, and then and then the thing is this. Look, I'm trying to be respectful as I can, but it's like Liv Morgan and Becky Lynch. Let's be real. We're next to nothing when they wrestle. And they had to wear like full body suits. It was like they were wrestling in hazmat suits or what have you like that. And, and I get it. I'm trying to be respectful, but it's like, don't tell me you don't watch that on TV. You know, that come yeah. on, you really look away. Come on, man. We ain't stupid. So, shoot. Yeah. But, but this pay-per-view was horrible. It was, was bad. Awful. It I, I watched a little bit of it because like I had a later day today so i watched a little bit of it and i can't remember anything that was memorable i'm gonna try to watch it again tonight just to 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 see maybe am i being critical like i get critical with the wwe product after wrestlemania i I just it's just a habit you know what i'm saying it's like where is the company going after wrestlemania Mm -hmm. and i don't i don't feel like i'm left in limbo by watching the product that you know what I'm saying? can be some sour grapes. Well, I, I, I don't think you're far off with that because here's the thing. You asked me what the most memorable n- moment of the night was, was that there was some controversial thing that Orton had his shoulder up, but Gunther got the three count and is by default the king of the ring. And now they're <laughs> talking about having a uh, like, like a, another match to see who really was the true real king of the ring, Randy Orton or Gunther. I mean, that's stupid stuff. That's like '80s stuff. That like, the, oh my, my shoulder was <laughs> off the mat or whatever like that. So I mean, uh, I, mean I, got, I got the card pulled up. Oh please, you have the floor. Give All it right. to me. Women's tag team championship: Jade Cargill and Bianca Belair versus Candice LeRae and Indy Hartwell. Mm. Followed by the women's world championship: Becky Lynch and Liv Morgan. Triple threat match for Intercontinental Intercontinental Championship. Sami Zayn, Chad Gable, and Big Bronson Reed. Bronson Reed, I like Bronson. Queen of the Ring Tournament Final, Lyra Bakura and Nia Jax. King of the Ring, Randy Orton, Gunther, and then the Undisputed WWE Championship, Cody Rhodes, and Logan Paul. Oh, my God. Oh. Did Nia Jax win that uh, the women's uh, King of the Ring or whatever like that? I mean, they give her so many chances, and she's dangerous in the ring. She beat, like breaks everybody else and so forth. Literally, um, not a Nia Jax. Nia, Nia Jax isn't bad. She just yeah. Nia Jax I, I won. Like... They gra- they graded all the matches. Also, she, oh please give me she, the grades. All right, yeah. So for, for the, Nia, I got nice you. Oh yeah. Um, I'm trying to find it. Hold on. All right. Uh, Cargo Belair with the versus Larray and Hartwell. C. Plus. Mm. Wow. Uh, Morgan and Lynch. A. Yeah, I told you that was like the match of the night, in my opinion. So, yeah. Triple threat match. Got a B plus. Mm. Who ended up winning? Did Zayn retain? Mm, hold on. I just want to Yep. Okay. 
Uh, Sierra says no, the Queen of the Ring was a B. Randy Orton and Gunther, they gave that one a A. Mm, okay. And then Logan Paul and Cody Rhodes, A. I can't believe that got an A, but whatever. Mm. I, this, the excitement's not there in the build-up doesn't feel like it's there. No, no, it's not. I mean, it was awful. I mean, it, 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 like like our tribal chief needs to save us, and I, I don't even like what they're really doing with with the uh, with the bloodline now with with Solo after yeah. he's like Owen forty five, and yet now he's you know like uh, uh, Mister Mister Cool, you know Jay Forbes or whatever. I ain't like, feeling um, it. I ain't nah, feeling man. it. it- I ain't feeling it, man. It ain't. It, it. It's like, dude. It ain't believable. It ain't believable. You know what I'm saying? Like, the, the, what they're doing with the bloodline. That, that's what I'm saying. We gotta find Panthers attack. Oh, really? Yeah, really? I've been. I've been going back and forth. So yeah, they were up nice. to and, and the Rangers, man. I'm. I'm telling you, it's like do or die for my Panthers right now. So yeah. Man. I, I ain't going to front. I, I I I do like the stars and the Rangers, but I when I when I used to watch the Panthers, do you remember was it uh, Ed Ed Jovanovski? Jovanovski. Yep. Van Bees Van Beesbrook and Scott Mellenby. Those were Yo. the dudes in '96. Man, they Yo, were. Yo, that team. Hey, I love with the rats. Team, Yo. I love that team on NHL '97. Oh my god, they were a great team. team! They were they were a fun team. So yeah, yeah. but but when it comes to hockey, I've always been a Dallas star. Mike Madonna, Mike Madonna. I liked Madonna. Darian so, yeah. Hatcher. Like when it comes to hockey, I like uh, I like the the Messier teams with Leach and uh, Adam Graves. I used to love Adam Graves. Adam Graves yeah. was nice. Yeah, for sure, for sure. But yeah, man, I mean, like, you know, it looks like, um, I mean, there's what, a minute 38 now in this uh, uh, Mavs-Timberwolves game, and the Wolves are up, so I don't know. I mean, it's a game, I mean. Cat, Cat, you you can't foul out in these type of moments, Cat. You got to realize that you got. Oh, was that number six? That was number six when he fouled (laughs) Luka? Oh, my goodness, so. Mm-mm-mm. I can't believe you got to know you got to know your personnel, man. You got to know your you got to know for yourself. Like you foul them on three shots. Get in there. Like oh. you foul you foul one of the best. Kyrie so believe. sick. Kyrie so yeah, sick. Kyrie honestly, sick, look at that face. Look at that man. Look at that dog in him, man. I'm telling you, dude. Oh, he's just looking at the clock. He's like, I got this. I got this. So oh, shoot. Oh, what's Ant Man gonna do, Two Pair? What's he gonna do? I don't know. Let's see. Gobert's asking for the ball, or is he setting a pick? And that's that's dirty. That's dirty right there. So yep, yep. Mm. Buried it. Step back. Mm. Mm. That'll quiet the crowd. So. Mm. Well, guys, what do you think? Um, uh, final thoughts, you know, we've gone about an hour and 20 something minutes here, you know, uh, uh, final thoughts on, uh, uh, the show and what we got coming up and everything. Remember the roast next week for Mr. Shane O'Mac. He joins the 40 club that me and two pair have kept the couch hey, nice and warm well, for him. Welcome, so. welcome to the 40 club, Shane, man. Welcome, yeah. welcome. Well, you welcome to the 40 club. You got one more week, like, you know what I'm saying? Oh, God. You, oh, God. you, you, oh, yeah, you with the you with the old you with the OGs now, man. You, you big it, man. you big OG now. That's I got the, ten days. I got ten days. Ten days. But we're gonna start it early. It's gonna be a week long celebration, and we're gonna finish it at at, at the pancake breakfast for yes. high school. So yes, we are. The recovery day after. 
<laughs> we'll see if I can't remember my birthday. That's the big part. Mm. I always forget every year. How can they do that? You don't forget theirs. So, shoot. Well, they don't let me forget theirs because it's the brokest time of the year because they're all born around Christmas. <laughs> oh. Now, you all didn't plan that pretty good. You did not plan that pretty good. So, no, you yeah, yeah. Uh, for, for the girls, thank the United States Marine Corps for deploying me and having seven months of build up ready to go. Ah, that's what it is. So, um, I got to give a shout out to my guy, Guy Man Stuff, my boy, Mark Machado, my oldest friend. We've been friends since we were five years old. He turns 40 in July. So you got one more coming in July. Shout out to my boy over there in Raleigh, North Carolina. Yo, yes, Mark my Machado. Guy. Yo, yeah. guy, you, you welcome to the club. Play, like. Hey, he's a class of 2003 guys with you, by the way. Oh, he is. Man. So, But he my graduated guy. in Miami. So, But yeah, we've been friends since we were five years old. So shout out to my my brother and my best friend mark machado where, so. where did he where did he go in miami mark what was the high school you went to type it in the comment box I, I i forget i should know this but i know that he went to gloria floyd elementary school with me for a bit before he transferred so so i gotta get i forget which high school he went to though so that's pretty dope yeah get, 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 get give us the high school we want the high school shout out of yeah where, where, where high school from, was so. it in miami because my, miami got coral reef college. senior high coral reef senior coral high school. reef senior high <laughs> that's where hey, he went so hey, class of miami miami got some boy i was watching some of these old high school like them day teams north day teams. Man, them teams, man. That's why everybody goes down there for that talent, man. That's what they do. So, man, I'm talking about talent. You, you want to talk about talent, man? Oh my goodness, like that's like the 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 players they were getting from just the state of Miami. (laughs) Um, I love love the uh, I love that that you the documentary part two. Oh, that one that that is. Fire. No, that was a fire thing. Did you see right here what just happened? Luca nails a three, gets fouled by Ant with 13.2 seconds. This is still a game, guys. This is still it's a still game. A game. So, it's still a game. It's yeah. still a game. Yeah, Mark then went to Miami Dade College and then FIU down there with his degree. So, yeah, nice. shout out to him, Panther over there in FIU. So, yeah. Nice. What is? Uh, you, well, well, I'm, let, let's stay on this for a second. I want to see what happens here. So okay, we'll curious. stay on. We'll stay on it for a second because this is interesting. Very we interesting. Be seeing, uh, be seeing a birth. I jump off. I got some parenting things to knock out before I get to bed. All right, man. Well, listen. Uh, holler at your brother. Okay. Be good. Uh, I'll see you all next week and take it easy on me just a little bit. <laughs> you bet. Later, brother. Later, bro. Let's see you, man. I can't believe he missed that free throw too, pair. I just I can't, can't believe, believe him. Look at I him. Can't. He even knows it. He knows that he let it he let it go. Ugh. Well, yeah. Yeah, for sure. So take care, brother. Oh yeah. man. Well, two pair, um I, I just can't believe he missed that free throw. I just oh my goodness. So wow. I can't believe Luca hit that crap. That was oh, my crap. Gosh. That was some crap. I can't believe he hit. And then the missed free throw on the other end to even allow that to happen or what have you. I mean, that's like just... Conley. You hit the free throw, then you you you're still. Oh my god! It's a seven point oh, game. Oh, oh. Yeah. wow! Yep. He made he uh he missed it. Yeah, I just can't believe he missed it. I can't believe Luca missed I, that free throw. I can't believe Luca missed it. Yeah. That would have that would have been a big four point play. That puts it in a two point ball game. It's true. That, it's true. What a swing! But Mike Conley, you hit the free throw. <sighs> I'm telling you, How did Mike Conley missed the free throw. Uh, this is just I don't know. Mike uh, we're in bizarro world. We're in bizarro world. Mike too, fair. Conley. You are one of the best, like, percentage shooters. You are an automatic. You can't be out here shooting like Nick Anderson. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, look I'm at sorry, this. Nick Anderson. Oh, man. I think the Wolves got it. You'll see why. Oh, I think the Wolves got the it. The Wolves got it. Oh, you're yeah, ready. I think they you're do. Ready. It was a hell of an inbound play. They had one guy that they left open, and he connected on the layup. So. Sure did. Oh, they stole that play. Hold yeah. on, I'm gonna watch it. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. 
Yeah. Should have closed him out. Shane, I'm sticking around. That's right. <laughs> At least the game was competitive. So yeah, you know. I'm glad it was competitive. Yeah, yeah. I am. Well, and but here's the other thing too: Minnesota's got to defend their home court. They didn't even do that first two games. So, you know, I mean, Mavericks have been better at home. That's the scary thing. Even in that OKC series, mm-hmm. they would have. <laughs> yeah, but mm. I can't believe it. That was a hell of a play. It was. It that was, was a hell of a play. That was a hell of a play. Was that the Mavericks' last time out to advance the ball? Look at Luca. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it. I'm about to, I'm gonna refresh this system. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. 105-100 was the final, so the Wolves wow. lived to fight another day. So, and I guess that means that that game will be Thursday, if I'm not mistaken. Game, mm. uh, game five, and that will be no, no, no. Yeah, Thursday. Yeah, two days from now, Thursday. So, yeah, in Minnesota. So, well, they didn't get swept. They didn't get swept. So, yeah, yeah. They Shout out to swept. if it wasn't for Carl Anthony Towns, his 20 uh second half 29. points or whatever, because he was yeah. a no show in the first half. So, you yeah, know, but Carl Anthony Towns, man, you played the best game of the series. Yeah, it's all right. Kyrie's gonna be ready for that next game, so he won't I be. can't believe, yeah, that they didn't close them out. Yeah. That was a, that was a missed opportunity, brother. That was a Min- missed opportunity. Minnesota, you gotta win in Minnesota. Yeah, I mean, is it? Yeah, for sure. So, well, brother, like always, um, you know, final thoughts, and that way, have us close us out. We, you know, how we have to end this show with that W, baby, because that's what it's hey, all about, man. Because the calls don't stop till when the clock is. It, it, the calls don't stop even when the clock is the clock. zero. Exactly, so, exactly. Yeah. Throw your dubs up, man. We up out of here. Hey, it's 11-11, but you just got this. (laughs) Rebels with a call. Peace.